Open your Bibles today to the book of Romans. Now, I know you all have heard this sermon probably many a time, and I thought I had too. <laughs> then the Holy Spirit shifted me. Amen? Oh, always does. Always does. Every time you do the exegetical work, it says a little bit something different than what you thought it said. Romans chapter 12, simply reading verses 1 and 2 um, uh, as it relates to time this morning. Uh, but what we're going to do, what we're going to do as it relates um, to my custom um, is I'm going to read you the text. I'm going to give you my title. Uh, then we're going to pray and then we'll walk into the word on today. Is that all right? Amen. Romans 12 verses 1 and 2. Um, I'm fairly certain you all have found that fairly quickly. If you need some, a little more time, just say, help me, Jesus. Amen. 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 Romans 12, 1 and 2. I'm reading from the English Standard Version of the Bible. And the word reads as thus. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God. Somebody say the mercies of God. My goodness. To present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Pray with me on today, beloved, as we focus on the sermonic theme, a kingdom blueprint. A kingdom blueprint. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we come under the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. God, thanking you for your sweet presence in this place on today. God, we give this service over to you, God, and, and we ask that you would have thine own way. God, that you would challenge us in our minds. God, that you would challenge the way we think. God, that you would challenge the way that we operate. God, that we would walk out of here looking more like you and less like us. God, you've called us to be examples. So, God, we give you the glory on today, God. We thank you for what you are doing in this place, God. I pray for this congregation, God, that you would keep taking them to new levels, God. Not only in the church, God, but in the community, outside these walls, God, that their impact would be evident and that you would get the glory for that. So, Father, we give you the, the glory, the honor, and the praise. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Let everyone here say amen. Amen, beloved. And so, a kingdom blueprint, kingdom blueprint. Uh, by way of introduction, I'd like to tell you, I came to Christ about 17 years ago, amen? And I'm going to date myself and I'm okay with that because I still think that God is still working on me. I still look good. Y'all don't take that how you want to. Um, I think God's working well with me. Uh, but about 17 years ago, um, as a 24-year-old man, um, I came to Christ. And uh, 17 years later, at 41 years old, as I was reading this text, what concerns me is that after all these years, I still battle against mental habits that I developed in the first 20 years of my life. Does that make sense? Am I the only one in here still battling with something? Y'all all got it figured out. Right, right. I, I know sometimes um, that, that we know how to do that on, on outside of our, our well, externally, uh, we know how to look the right way. But we could be struggling inside. We, 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 we might be on a seminary campus, but we still have things that, 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 that are coming against us and we're fighting with. And a lot of times we fight those things in isolation. Because I don't want you to see that. Right. I don't want you to see my struggle with, with things uh, of the world. Uh, and I'm going to break that down for you. But, but that's bothering me. Is it why am I still battling um, certain mental habits 20 years or 17 years later? And I understand that, that, that a war is what we're in. Amen? It's a legitimate war that we're in. So there's always going to be temptation. There's always going to be trials. That's just part of the life that we live. However, I still find myself going back to God and going, but I, I feel like I should be further along than this. And that, 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 that may not be your story, but, but, but I, I heard God say to me that, that he wants to reprogram my thinking through his spirit. He wants to reprogram my thinking through his spirit. Now, now, now inside of that, I must understand, for me to have my, pro, my, my, my thinking reprogrammed through the spirit means I must walk in the spirit. Daily. Y'all are looking at me in, in such a holy crowd sitting in front of me. Um, I know everybody in here has the ability to walk, literally walk in the spirit 24-7. Is that working for you? 
Thank y'all for being honest with me. That's, I, 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 I said, God, how in the world do I get to, 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 to where I can walk in the spirit daily so I can get to the place to where I start seeing a kingdom blueprint and not a worldly blueprint for my life? And, 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 and God said to me, he said, that, well, you got to respond to the spirit. And to respond to the spirit, that means I must surrender. I got to give up the things that I want to control. Because there are certain things where it's easy for me to surrender, and it's normally when I'm in crisis. I'm just saying. I surrender and say, God, please, you do a powerful work in this, because I no longer can do anything with it, but I only turned it over after I. I got to respond to the Spirit and be actively engaged, actively engaged, participating for the reprogramming to work. So let's look at this this text. Paul says, well, in my text, it says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Worship when he's saying, uh, therefore, ultimately, Paul is moving um, as it relates to the 12th through the 15th chapter uh, of Romans into more of an exhortation. Amen. Uh, First 11 chapters of the book, Paul is breaking down uh, what's going on uh, in the church at Rome as it relates to certain elitism um, and and how the Romans, uh, well, not the Romans, the Gentiles and the Jews are treating each other. How how do we treat each other? I'm just asking the question. This is not necessarily in the text, but how do we really treat each other? Do, do, Do some of us feel like that we're so holy and we got it all right that some people we look down upon like you can't come near? I know. I know. I know. I know. And, so, and some of us are on the other end of that spectrum, and we look down on the people that uh, we believe are acting too holy. We don't, we don't want to be around you. First of all, because you're on your way to heaven. Because you've already got it figured out. But, 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 but basically what he's saying, and I, I don't want to go too deep into the background, because I... The book of Romans is probably one of the most theological books of the entire Bible. Amen? And so what Paul is saying is that in light of the mercies of God and his fulfillment of those promises, we should offer ourselves fully to God. Now, when we look at the word mercies, uh, it's interesting because when I look at it, I say, okay, uh, therefore, brothers, as it relates to the mercies of God, what, what are the mercies of God? Do you have any mercies of God in your life? Are you saved? That's mercy. Have you been redeemed? Uh, that's, that's, that, that's mercy. Uh, uh, have you been restored? Uh, uh, that, 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 that's mercy. Have you experienced God? That, that, that's mercy. Uh, uh, have you ever been stuck in a place and God pulled you out when you thought you didn't even deserve to be pulled out? That, that's, that's mercy. I'm just trying to set this thing up for you so you understand. There's a reason why I'll give my life to Christ. There's a reason why. He's not just saying, hey, look, um, God is good. His mercies endure forever. And because of that, um, you need to make sure that you're offering your entire life to Christ. No, we all individually should have something that God has done that causes us to say, hey, I surrender. I give up doing it my way because of who you are. Not because of what you do, but because of who you are. I'll give my, my, my life my life to you, so my question to you is, what are you offering to God? It's interesting that people got quiet on that. <sighs> Just saying. When you, what are you offering to God? Do you offer God complaint? Hmm? Do you, do, do you offer God worry? God, I don't know what we're going to do. <sighs> Plus, I don't like this job. <sighs> Acting like the world, I done cussed out my supervisor. Why y'all say just, uh-oh? Like, because like, 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 basically what it implies is like you've done that, right? So I'm just letting you know how it feels being up here. You, oh, uh-oh, no, Jesus, no, Mm-mm, not me, no. I'm offering my body, preacher. I've been offering my body since I was six. I've been giving God all of me. And it's just, it's just an important question. What am I offering to God? Am I, am I, am I offering um, an elitist mindset? Is that what I'm offering to God, that I've made it, that I feel like God, I'm doing enough? 
Is it a works righteousness for you? Where you work so hard and you do so much you feel like God owes you a cookie? Paul is saying, Christians, as Christians, we need to display the reality of God that is in our lives by living a new life. That's, that, 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 that's how we, we, we respond and display um, uh, uh, the reality of God in our life is by living a new way. It's because of God's grace and mercy that I offer or re- surrender myself to him. He says, ah, sorry, my Bible turned pages. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God to present your bodies... My body, mind, will, and emotion. But let's not get this twisted and say that this is just a spiritual piece. He's saying all of you, my physical body and my spiritual body. Um, We cannot give dedication to God. We can't dedicate ourselves to God in the spirit on just a spiritual piece. And then at the same time neglect our bodies. Okay, okay, sorry, I'm going to go here on this one. Um, For some of us, our body is regularly neglected. Huh? We regularly neglect our bodies. I want fries and an Oreo shake. (laughs) Huh? I want surf and turf. Huh? Huh? Well, you know, we're going to the game, and this is what they do at the game. I got a beverage. I've been here a couple of times. I know y'all don't like for me to say things. I have unholy attachments to them. Huh? I'm at the game. I'm doing some things. I'm neglecting my body. It's supposed to be a temple, but the stuff I put in it causes issues. I, I, I know. I know. I, I suffer from gout. And, and then they say, well, you can't have bread or yeast. Huh? It's not from Jesus. Some of y'all, when I went to this church, y'all regularly saw me on crutches and limping around. Am I right about it? Why? Because I was putting stuff in my body that was neglectful, and then my body started reflecting that. If you neglect your body, it will reflect it. If you neglect the spirit, it will reflect it. Are you with me? So you sitting back talking about you want to you want a healthier life with God and you want to move closer to Jesus and you want to be in a place to where you're, you're, you're getting spiritual insight and all of this wonderful, holy, tr- churchy stuff. But you go home and watch power and empire and. I'm just saying, what, what are you feeding yourself? What are you eating? Offer your whole body. All of you. Now, gets, now this is where it gets tough, right? Because he said, offer every part of you. And I'm going, okay, now I'm cool with giving you 75%. But this other 25, God, you really? Come on. Medea's only going a little to the left nowadays. Medea ain't. Come on, God, I can't do. Just. I'm just, I'm just asking a, a question. We, we, we cannot give dedication to God and to the Spirit of God and at the same time neglect our bodies. Real quick, for others, the body is everything and the Spirit is neglected. Vanity? Huh? You got people that are gorgeous on the outside and tore up on the inside. Neglect. Since those that, that worship God give their entire lives over to them, over to him, so that he is honored and praised in everything we do. My goal is to make God's name famous, not mine. Does that make sense? And if, I'm, if my goal is to make God's name famous, not mine, then I surrender myself. I offer all of me to him so that he would get the glory. Huh? Huh? That's offering my body as a living sacrifice, a living sacrifice, uh, a living sacrifice. And let me see if I can spin this very quickly for you. So in the Greek, living sacrifice can be interpreted a couple of, th- uh, a couple of different ways. It says in here it's talking about uh, your reasonable service. It also can be translated your rational service. Uh, it also be, can be translated your informed service. So it's an intelligent an intelligent piece where, where I'm offering myself not ignorantly like an animal would. I'm not a dead sacrifice. 
Huh? I'm, I'm a living sacrifice, which, which means two things, that I'm dead in my sin and I'm alive in Christ. But here's a piece that jacked me up when I was reading. It said that's the trip about being a living sacrifice is that you could jump off the altar. Huh? It's, 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 it's reasonable service. It's reasonable. This is reasonable for what God has done in my life, who God has been, what he's brought me through, what he's brought my family through, what he's brought my friends through, all those different things. It's reasonable for me to give myself to him. If if it wasn't cheap grace, then it can't be a cheap sacrifice. Huh? Huh? If it cost him his life, then it should cost me mine. And giving it back to him, I'm just living, a living, living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. He wants me to come to him intelligently. He wants me to come to him um, from a space of knowing why I'm doing this. This is an informed worship. It's informed by my experience with him. It's informed by my knowledge of him. It's informed by the goodness in him. It's informed by the love of him. And that's why I give my body to him, because it's reasonable. It makes sense for me to worship him. Now, 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 just carefully, uh, in in that piece, when we see the sacrifice piece, I thought this was very important, um, because in ancient times, sacrifices were very popular. You guys are familiar with that. Um, The popularity of the sacrifice could lead to abuse. Uh huh. People thought that all they had to do to please their God was to offer a sacrifice without any regard to their own attitude or sincerity in doing so. Hmm. People, sometimes that's how we do church. Sometimes this is how we serve God out of duty as opposed to doing it out of love. Huh? Out of duty as opposed to out of love. So we're just sacrificing because we think that's what we're supposed to do. Oh, come on, come come on, y'all. Some of y'all been on five fasts already this year. Nothing changed. Nothing, nothing changed. Now, you just felt better. Lost a couple pounds, gained them back. Because <laughs> y'all know how we come off fast, right? <laughs> Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. We come off a of fast wrong. You ever hear people like the last three days of a fast? Man, man, you, I, man I'm finna tear some chicken up, Doc. <laughs> I'm finna tear some chicken up. Hey, y'all wanna get together and go eat together? Everybody that fasted, let's go together. Let's go tear some up. Somebody get some reservations at Papa Do's. Let's go to the nine o'clock so we can get there early. <laughs> tear some brunch up. I'm finna eat catfish. You haven't introduced meat in your diet in a month. You're going to get sick. (laughs) Improper sacrifice leads to abuse, and you'll probably end up sick. Got to be careful. Got to be careful. What's the point of my sacrifice? Is it just out of duty? Or is it because I truly love Jesus? And I I, want to see him. When in my life? Let me try to hurry. I know my clock time is getting short. Run to verse 2 with me. Um, it says, um, but be transformed. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may deserve the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. This is, this is where this text jacked me all the way up. Do not be conformed to this world. I want you to see first off the, tra- the, the, the contrast. Don't be conformed to this world, but that's the conjunction of contrast. Be transformed by the renewal of your mind. That's just very simple. Conformed um, speaks to, in the Greek, um, being pressured or being squeezed in to fit the scheme of something. Does that make sense? He said, he say, he say, don't be conformed. Don't allow yourself to be pressured or squeezed in to fit and be stuck in the mold of the world. Pressure and squeezing as, as, as if almost like a, like, like a blueprint. For those of you guys that know um, about construction and things of that nature, before you can build the building, you got to have the blueprint, right? Well, the world has a blueprint. 
and it's trying to squeeze us into that blueprint, which is why you see more tolerance in the church than the truth of what the word says. We're being squeezed into looking like the world instead of being transformed and looking more like Jesus. you you got to understand the world works extremely hard uh, to squeeze us into its blueprint, right? Commercials, news, social media, music, material things. You know, you got to have some Jordans. For the ladies, you got to have the baddest purse, the baddest. I mean, y'all, some of the pumps y'all put on. <laughs> I'm messing with the worship team. You can only do that for one service. You got to have flats for the second one. <laughs> you got to choose which service you're going to be cute for. I'm playing with y'all. Um, <laughs> huh? Huh? <laughs> the, the, wor- the, wor- the world is trying to get you where you look like, well, I'm living my best life. You know what I mean? And nothing's wrong. At least that's what your Facebook says. Your Facebook says you're living your best, you're living your best life. And in the world, when it, when, it, when it talks about God and it flips who God is supposed to be, it makes it seem like, like living for God is like living like a, a monk on a mountain by yourself. Like that's got to be the most boring thing ever. Can anybody in here say that you've loved God and it's getting better and better and better and better? That's why I'm not conforming. I won't be squeezed into the blueprint of the world. We we, we have to feed our minds information that realigns us with the kingdom. The kingdom blueprint. It's an internal process. The kingdom blueprint. Love, peace, joy, happiness, self-control. A kingdom mindset knowing that that I don't have to worry about the fact that we're sitting in an already and not yet because I know when he comes back, I'm going. Come on, an already and not yet. Christ has already come. Amen. Christ has already saved me from my sins, but he hasn't come back yet. So while he hasn't come back yet, I have to understand that I'm in a war and Paul is describing to me what this war looks like. And he's telling you, be careful about conforming about letting yourself fit into what the world does. And a lot of us do it. A lot of us want to look like the world. We don't want to look like peculiar people. Huh? Come come on, come on, because some of y'all in here right now, uh, and and, and I'm hurrying, some of y'all in here right now are, 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 are great Christians in front of other Christians. Right? I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just talking about con- conformance to the world, conformance to the world. Everybody in here has one friend, has one friend that you comfort- comfortable on the phone and your lang- language gets colorful. Can I just leave it at colorful? Y'all with me? Language on, with that person on the phone. With that person, you know, pastor made me so mad today. I'm so sick. I'm, I'm going to mess around and leave, doc. I ain't going to keep taking this. All of those words were like stuff I could say. Y'all saying stuff I can't say. Y'all have kicked me out to church. But some of y'all, that's how you really gossip more than a little bit. God, yeah, you had that person in your life you can be totally out of character with and you love it. And why you keep that person around you? Huh? You tell them something like, you're the only one I can keep it real with. I'm going to be honest, I didn't know it was going to go like this. Um. <laughs> and then he says transformed, tra- 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 transform, meaning um, I'm becoming something different. I'm becoming something new. Amen? Yeah, it's, it's likened to uh, the process of a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. We know that you can't turn, a caterpillar can't turn into a butterfly without going into a cocoon and having to struggle to get its wings. And beloved, we're struggling sometimes to get our wings in Christ, but it's worth it. It's worth it because I would rather be um, in a cocoon struggling to get my wings than a caterpillar left in the dust of my sin. Sick of living in the dust of my sin. I want to fly like eagles do and see the world from a different vantage point because I'm not conforming, but I'm being transformed. And that's because my mind is being renewed. So I'm able to see the truth of who Christ is. I'm able to see what Christ is saying and telling us in his word. And it's making sense and it's making me want to live differently. 
There is an intimate connection between what one thinks and what one does. Do you agree? I say this simply like this. Right thinking leads to right living. Amen? Uh, we, we are transformed as our thinking is altered. New thinking equals new behaviors. It's like working out, right? If all you think about is the soreness, you're not. But when you think about the benefits and the health that it's going to get, you start seeing yourself in that new pers- perspective. Some of y'all look in the mirror and can see your new self like, yeah, this is what I'm going after. And when you see that, now you have a joy set before you and you have the ability to go after it differently because your thinking has, has, has changed. The purpose of a renewed mind is so that we can discern what God's will is as opposed to our will. And the result is that we're able to please God by doing his will. Anybody read the book, uh, Henry Blackaby? By Henry Blackaby called Experiencing God? Let's you know that you can get involved in God's activity. You work where God is already working. Isn't that an interesting concept? Instead of inviting God to come do your thing, you find out where he's doing his thing, and you just go join up with that because you know that the anointing, the blessing, the, 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 the resources are already there. If you conform to a worldly mindset, you'll be worried about how you can get yours and how God can get his last. I'll close with this. Paul is saying in this text is not that as it relates to us in the world, it's, 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 it's a moral separation, not a physical isolation. Does that make sense? Morally, we are separated from the world because we live a different ethical code than what the world does. But it's not a physical isolation because if we isolate ourselves from them, they'll never see the true examples of who Christ is and they'll never know how to work it out for themselves. We've been called as representatives for Christ. We've been called to look like Christ, operate like Christ, be salt in the earth, be a preservative. That doesn't come from from, from physical isolation, but our lifestyles should be distinctive from the world. And understand, God is not asking you just to break a few habits, people. Because sometimes that's where we end up. We end up looking at texts like this. Oh, he's just asking me to break a few habits. No, he's saying a complete and total change of attitude and behavior. Yeah. The self-mastery is possible because of the mental equipment. Somebody say, God has given me mental equipment. Yes, it's it's inherited us because we've been created and saved by God and everything that God made is good. A kingdom mindset sees the promises of God as yes and amen. It sees God's kingdom blueprint through the eyes of an eternal reality and existence. My question to you today is, what are you offering to God? What does your living sacrifice look like? Are you conforming? to the pattern of the world, are you being transformed? Continually renewing your mind by the word of God, by the truth of God, feeding yourself what God would have you to eat. Are you living that out because the blueprint has been written in the word? Or are you choosing to control things for yourself? Sometimes you keep getting the same things because you won't do anything different. That's the definition of insanity. Paul calls us to a new mind here. I think if you finish reading out the chapter, you can see that he shows you what a a renewed mind does. It changes the way we love. It changes the way we live. It changes the way we treat each other. That's what God wants. It's a church unified by love and truth that only comes through the Spirit. Amen? God bless you and God keep you. We'll call.